Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss on the topic Biotechnology Principles and Processes Part 3 and this video is presented to you by www.examhe.com So the topics we are going to cover in this video is Cloning Vector and Properties of a Good Host. So first of all we are going to discuss about the Cloning Vector. So as we, uh, we have discussed in our previous videos that what are the vectors? Vectors are the DNA molecule which carries the DNA of interest which is to be cloned okay and uh, which is to be processed further so the vector is a DNA molecule that has an ability to replicate autonomously so these vector has an ability that they can replicate by their own okay and uh, in an appropriate host when they are inserted in an appropriate host and in which the DNA fragment to be cloned is integrated so for example if this is a vector this is a plasmid vector so uh, it has so we integrate a DNA of interest in, into it so we first we will remove this site with the help of restriction enzymes which are also called molecular scissors and uh, with the help of restriction enzymes when we will remove this position it will be like this and now it can carry a uh, DNA which is to be fragmented or to be cloned into it and this DNA came from some other source like some uh, uh, human DNA or human genome okay so this, this is a part or a fragment of a DNA which is to be inserted into this uh, vector and when it, it get inserted into it the DNA ligase DNA ligase is there which is also called molecular glue and uh, it glues up the ends of the vector with the DNA of interest and now this uh, plasmid or this DNA molecule which we are using as a vector should have the ability to replicate by itself so it should have the ORI or the origin of replication so when it replicate autonomously by its own so the DNA which we have uh, inserted into it it will also get replicated with it okay and uh, further we will get more and more and more the cloned DNA okay in into the host so now what are the properties of a good vector uh, it should able to replicate autonomous autonomously and therefore the vector must have origin or I origin of replication origin of DNA replication which is denoted as ORI and uh, it should function inside the host cell so this is a vector it is then inserted into a host cell and host cell is uh, which is the most common host cell which is used experimentally is E. coli okay Escherichia coli and into which this uh, vector is inserted with the clone DNA and uh, now this vector should have the origin of replication or o ORI so that uh, it can replicate the DNA so when it get replicate it, its copy become 2 in number and uh, when this host will divide by binary fusion the DNA with the vector would be inserted into it and uh, would be transferred through it and further the process will goes on further the replication process and the division of cell process will continue okay so it is the sequence from where the replication is start and if any piece of the DNA is integrated into it can also replicate inside the host cell producing a high number of copies so what we want is high number of copy of the, this uh, fragmented DNA okay an extra uh, chromosomal is no, uh, small genome example plasmid phages and viruses may be used as a vector so uh, the most common example of a vector is plasmid phages or viruses and uh, here you can see the diagram of a plasmid so these are the plasmid PBR322 and PUC1819 so this is the plasmid which is used as a vector uh, for uh, gene cloning okay so the ideal vector should have less than 10 kb 
in uh, size because the DNA molecule which we want is purified and uh, while the purification process the DNA uh, get broken down as we have discussed in our previous uh, video about the gel electrophoresis uh, about uh, how the DNA get purified how the DNA of interest get purified from the other uh, DNA fragment and uh, the size of that DNA fragment is small so uh, the vector uh, size should be also uh, less than 10 kb and uh, this vector is should be easy to isolate because first of all it's a big deal to isolate a DNA of interest and if uh, it take a long procedure to isolate a vector 2 then the experiment uh, would take a very long process so the vector should be at least the vector should be easy to I isolate okay it should be easily to introduce into the host cell it should easy inter, uh, vector should easily catch up with the atmosphere of the with the environment inside the host cell so that it can replicate by its own the vector should have a suitable marker gene as you can see in this diagram that the uh, vector has the suitable marker gene amphicillin and tetracycline as you can see in this and in this you can see amphicillin and lactose the, uh, these are the two markers uh, of vector PUC1819 and amphicillin tetracycline are the markers of uh, uh, vector PBR322 and uh, what is the help uh, use of the suitable marker is that if uh, we insert any uh, DNA of interest in this area if we consider that if we insert a DNA of interest in this amphicillin area so first we have to remove this gene these genes and then we have to insert the DNA of interest what we are needed DNA of interest and after that uh, when the cloning is uh, done properly so we have to check whether uh, the DNA of uh, interest ha has been inserted properly or not so uh, we need a suitable marker for the detection of the transformed host cell okay so now because the genes which is present in this side amphicillin genes has been removed so the uh, now this plasmid would not be able to resist the amphicillin but able to resist the tetracycline antibiotic so this is an antibiotic resistant procedure which is which is used for detection of the selected uh, of for the selection of transformed host cell and uh, it should have the ability to integrate itself it should have the ability to allow the foreign DNA to insert into it and integrate itself it should have a unique target site for the restriction enzyme because as you can see this uh, HINT3, ECO, RV, BAM, H1 and these are the unique uh, restriction sites present over the plasmid okay so it should have a unique restriction site so that uh, when it is introduced with the restriction enzyme uh, the restriction enzyme should cut at the specific sequence specific recognition sequence okay okay now we are going to discuss about the plasmid vector uh, first of all we have discussed about what is the uh, what is the ideal vector now we are going to discuss about the plasmid vector because the plasmid vector is a vector which is most commonly used so plasmid is a DNA molecule which is obtained from the bacteria uh, other than the bacterial chromosome it is other than the bacterial chromosome if we consider this is a bacteria so this is the bacterial chromosome and this is the plasmid so it is a kind of extra chromosome uh, extra chromosomal DNA okay so plasmid is independent and it uh, replicate into independently okay and plasmid is circular and uh, may either integrated uh, may either independent or independent or may be integrated into the bacterial chromosome so if it is integrated into the bacterial chromosome then in that case it is called epizomes okay plasmid varies in size from 1 kb to 250 kb okay it's a size of plasmid depend on uh, what are the what is the species uh, of bacteria you are using for the experiment PBR322 is an ideal plasmid vector which have a selectable marker as we have discussed uh, it has a selectable mar marker tetracycline and amphicillin resistance gene 
so as you can see PVR322 which is most commonly used in experiment and it has two selectable marker which is most common uh, ampicillin and tetracycline uh, containing uh, resistance genes so it has unique restriction sites for 12 different restriction enzymes so uh, within the tetracycline and ampicillin so within the tetracycline and ampicillin only they have the unique restriction sites for 12 different restriction enzymes so they have a unique uh, uh, recognition sequence for 12 different rest restriction enzyme within the selectable marker so this is actually beneficial because when we uh, introduce any uh, restriction enzyme to the plasmid so it would cut only the specific site not uh, it, it, it would not cut from uh, other sites like from here from here from here from here if the restriction enzyme would cut uh, at many sites then uh, it would not be uh, circular or uh, we will get the fragments of plasmids also and uh, what we actually want is only a particular site so that we can insert a DNA of interest okay so if we want this particular site we should insert uh, we should introduce a restriction enzyme which only cut here and here not on the whole plasmid okay so uh, this is beneficial that uh, they have a restriction uh, enzyme which is unique and uh, at diff 12 different uh, site uh, so if we if it cut at this end if we consider that a restriction en enzyme cut at the tetracycline end so it will create a gap here and this gap can be fulfilled by inserting a DNA of uh, interest and uh, after which if it is a selectable marker so after which if we want to know that uh, whether the cloning has been done properly or not we will uh, what we will do is we will grow this uh, culture into the tetracycline and uh, if the if that culture would not grow in that tetracycline containing that antibiotic tetracycline containing medium so what will happen that we will know that uh, the DNA has been properly cloned in this culture because the genes which are present for tetracycline resistance are not working okay but it is working in ampicillin resistance uh, ampicillin antibiotic uh, culture medium okay so now the presence of origin of replication or ORI okay so it should have the ability to autonomously replicate so it should have an origin of replication or ORI it should have a small size of 4.4 KB and high copy number of 15 copies per cell okay so it should produce a high copy number and it should uh, have uh, origin of replication it should replicate autonomously it should have a small size it should have selectable marker it should have recognition size site of uh, restriction enzyme so the ideal ex other ideal plasmid is PUC1819 so PVR322 is the uh, vector which fulfill all the criteria which is needed for a ideal vector okay so these are all the criteria which uh, which is needed for an ideal vector for gene cloning okay okay now the second one is bacteriophage vector and bacteriophage actually bacteriophages are the viruses which attack on the bacteria and uh, two type of cycle run uh, by the bacteri bacteriophages over bacteria lytic cycle and lysogenic cycle so uh, if the lysogenic situation take place the phages uh, the phage chromosome will integrate into the bacterial chromosome and then the multiplication will take place so this is the diagram of a bacteriophage so this is bacteriophage which attacks on bacteria it has head it has neck collar which is said it has uh, and tail okay it has this neck piece it has tail so this is the uh, bacteriophage so what happened is this uh, if we will consider this as a phage genome this is a phage genome 
and this is the replaceable region okay so this is the region from uh, to where the dna of interest uh, should be inserted so what we will do first we will apply a restriction enzyme and restriction enzyme should have a specific uh, recognition site here and uh, when it cut here we will uh, uh, do the dna recombination we will add the dna of interest here the dna which is should be cloned we will uh, insert here and then we will apply dna ligase which will seal the nicks will which will seal the ends and after that we will pack that into a, a phage head this is the phage and then after that uh, what we will do is we will make the phage to attack the uh, or to infect the e coli culture so this is the e coli culture and we allowed the phage to attack over the e coli culture so what happen is in the lysogenic cycle as we have discussed that the phage chromosome is integrated into the uh, bacterial chromosome so same has been happened uh, that uh, the phage chromosome is integrated into the bacterial uh, plasmid okay but the phage chromosome already contains the uh, uh, dna of interest target dna okay so likewise the uh, recombination has been done likewise the gene cloning has been done okay so several bacteria phages are used for cloning vector and the most common is lambda and m13 phage and uh, they are more efficient uh, these are more efficient than the plasmid because we can insert over 24 kb uh, and for plasmid vector we can insert only 15 kb so we can insert a larger dna fragment into a bacterial phage and it is easy to detect it is easy to re screen the recombinant vector okay okay now we are going to discuss about the property of a good host so uh, good ho good host what are the good host most commonly good host which is used is e coli strain k12 and uh, because it it is easy to transform it is easy to isolate it is easy to transform it support replication it support recombination okay it sh should be free from element it is free from element which uh, interfere with the replication of recombinant uh, dna so e coli bacteria is an ideal host for dna cloning okay also isolating dna is uh, easiest in the host therefore the initial cloning experiment is generally carried out in e coli so the basic uh, experiment which is carried out in very low level like very uni university level or uh, initial level of any experiment e coli bacteria is used is the most common bacteria and it is the most common bacteria which is found in our environment and the strain which is used is k12 okay Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe. Exam hai on YouTube. Like our videos and please do comment. Thank you.